ladies and gentlemen, let's do some Bachelor in Paradise pre-gaming. It's the Bachelor Rush Hour. Hit the like button. in paradise gonna get it freestyle slow here we go hit the like button and nod a number of times 23 people in the chat let's get it going what's everyone up to i'm gonna be watching the show tonight on west coast time Give it another minute till you guys hit the like button. Let's do it right now. The episode three recap uh, live stream. Hello, everybody. Paradise preview. Getting ready for week three, episode three, week two of The Bachelor in Paradise. I'm a little uh, rocky right now as we get the day going. Just had a nice shower. Looking to about right there. Anyone watch Dancing with the Stars last night? Boy, Gabby's looking pretty good. You knew Gabby was going to be on top of the Dancing with the Start leaderboards when she had the final dance of the evening last night. Kristen Nunez says, Dave, you are so close to your wedding. I got married in 2008, and marriage is 100% the hardest relationship ever, but I'm here for you and Tasha always. I'll tell you what, managing the comment section seems to be harder than marriage, but we'll have to see how it all goes. All right, we have one hour. I'll tell you what, let's do this. Um, again, I don't, what do I know about marriage? I haven't been married. Uh, I know that weddings are expensive. Got that one down. All right, let's try to find a way to do um, a timer here. Countdown to 4.55. Probably going to end that. I'm having some technical difficulties. If you guys don't mind just waiting for me real quickly. Having some issues with my live stream. Okay, 58. We'll set the timer for 52 minutes. We will do a 52-minute live stream. And, of course, as you all know, the rules. Don't be mean. Pretty much it. No name-calling, no creeps, super chats. Always appreciated, although not demanded. Although I appreciate their demand sometimes. All right. Let's see what's going on over here. 
Romeo saw this face and thought, let me go in for a kiss. Yeah, this isn't the face of someone who wants to make out. This is the face of someone who feels like you've pitched your pilot to them. And they're like, can I go to the bar now? That's what that face is. Um, I've seen that face before. I've seen it. Yeah, if you haven't been catching up with Dancing with the Stars, it's pretty good. Susie says, if I had to guess, that is not Sally's suitcase. And then let's go to, you know, Bachelor whatever, or Good Friends Bachelor whatever, have uh, Dancing whatever, which is their Bachelor. Oh, is uh, my new coffee ready? And this has some um, mushrooms in it. Tasha just made me a coffee with mushrooms, but it's the, uh, it's the, it's the coffee mushrooms, you know? All right, so what do we have here? Let's see what this is. Why can't I click on these things? Are we all just messing with me today? It looks like um, Instagram's just not having a day. Um, all right, let's go to the Bachelor in Paradise promos. Let's see if they have any new ones up. So far, they only had two from earlier today. We already played them. Uh, looks like Jared and Ashley will be attending the evening events tonight. We'll get into that. Celeste says, Dave, I wholeheartedly believe you will make a great husband and father. Oh, thank you so much. I mean, honestly, I, I don't know. I, I don't expect being a husband to be any different. I mean, we've... Right, Tasha? I mean, do you expect our lives to change much? I don't know if she can hear me. Yeah, maybe that's naive of me, but we've been together for like 47 years. I don't think I'm going to wake up tomorrow and be like, where's my newspaper? Went? You know. Having kids, that'll change things. Um, although I have to say, I, I think, I think my senior bass down might be more work than a kid. At least the kid, you can strap into one of those bouncing things in between the doorway. You know, those things you strap the kid into. I can't do that with the dog. They should make that for dogs. Um, all right. Yeah. We have a stagecoach story. I'm going to be covering this tomorrow. So, you know what, to be quite honest, I don't want to really get into it now, but Kira and Justin seem to be battling each other for uh, the least likable person on the beach. Although I tell you what, I'm on team Justin. I'll tell you that in advance. I'm on Justin's side. Let's uh, turn the music off here. Um, I will open up the voicemail line. I just don't know if there's much to call in about, but if anybody wants to just call in and have a good old fashioned chat, you can always do that. I won't stop you. Um, we had a very, very busy day here at bachelor nation news. Um, probably our busiest day of the week. We had, some very interesting stories. Susie and Clayton obviously went on off the vine. Maybe it's not obvious. Meanwhile, Nick Vile, small YouTuber, Nick Vile, um, spoke very ill about his ex, Caitlin Bristow. A very interesting uh, combination of videos there. Um, let's go to some of your voicemails. Hey, Dave, it's Karen from Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. I was actually, I actually have a question about your upcoming nuptials. Yeah, please. Is Tasha taking your last name or is she hyphenating it? Just wondering. Congratulations to you both. You're a beautiful couple. Have a good night. Thank Bye. you so much, Karen. It's Tasha, but I obviously, I was like, am I getting married to Tasha? Uh, you know, weddings are expensive. Tasha needed that PPP loan to help pay for the florals. Tasha's keeping her last name. Her last name's Courtney. I'm keeping my last name, which is Neil. Uh, I'm keeping my middle name, Power Recapper. Uh, but um, yeah, that's where we're at there. Hey, Dave. I know I just left a voicemail, but I watched your preview video and I'm just cracking up because... <laughs> As a teacher myself, you got all kinds of letters going on. We got F to the this or the that. <laughs> this is in reference to the uh, Sing the D or Sing the C uh, when Kira said her love language was Sing the C. I, I don't know exactly what she said, but the, the point was is she, she was putting um, some letters together. This show, I must say, what brings us all here, we're all from different ages and stages, but what brings us here is we are all trying to escape real life. Um, each of us is going through something. We see ourselves in each of these characters on TV, and I hope that this show eventually, I mean, on a more serious note, honestly, because I've been watching this show since a really long time, um, I hope that we get to a point where we can laugh about it. I see it transitioning, and this show, it's just a funny show, and I hope that there's not a lot of hate. Um, 
it's it's fun. It's all in good fun. So that's why I come to your channel. That's why we're all into Dave Neal. We are the Dave Neal community because you take serious content from it, but then you lighten it up with some laughter, and I just appreciate you. So sorry for the second voicemail, but I just I finished watching your preview, and you had me laughing with all of the alphabet comments of whatever. So you're much better at it than me. And I appreciate you, and uh, I'll see you guys all later. Yeah, Bye. no need to apologize. We appreciate extra uh, voicemails. No need to N your G when you're Ving your P over uh, by the um, Elemento uh, uh, Z. Uh, that if you watch the video, that still it still means nothing. Okay, uh, so before you, your brain blows up trying to put uh, thoughts together. Um, so uh, Ashley, um, Ashley Barker said you both have first names as last names. Yeah, yeah. I was where was I the other day? Someone was like, "Is your last name Dave or Neil?" And I was like, <laughs> "I mean, to me, it's like pretty. It's pretty obvious that uh, my last name wouldn't be Dave." Uh, but I guess to some people, Neil is only a first name. Tasha Courtney has two first names, so that's four. That's two humans with four first names. Um, as far as the f keeping her name goes, I, I really don't care. I do, I do recognize the societal pressure where, like, some people might think that's weird. I personally don't really care. Um, I, I, with entertainment and with Google, um, changing your name. I mean, this might sound shallow, but changing your name—it's like you spend your whole life building this identity. Uh, Tasha's name's very pretty, and um, I like my name. Uh, you know, I, I don't really have a name that's like we're the seventeenth generation of Hammersmiths. You know, I like I don't have that, uh, but it doesn't mean I'm not me. You know what I mean? So either way, um, it do 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 scabbity boop boop ba do. Ashley said I hated my maiden name, so I was glad to take my husband's name. Yeah, I don't I don't see Tasha. T like taking my name but we just got mail from someone that said uh dear mr and mrs neil we've had to let the um wedding officiant know she was like are you taking his last name and we're like no we're not doing that okay good so we can celebrate tasha and dave because yeah it is it is kind of weird i mean i'm not and again i don't have any judgment about it really but you do have to think about these things because you go all right well, i guess we're signing contracts i guess you have to think about these things so you go all right well it is kind of weird how people become like, it's now Mr. and Mrs. Thomason. And it's like, okay, yeah, sure. But I've always been one to say I, I would never want Tasha to lose whatever her identity is. Not that that is what happens. Um, but of course, it is all based on some weird, archaic situation. Didn't it used to be that no one took anyone's last name? Either way. Um, she's going to live under my house. She's going to live by my, as long as she calls me chef. Uh, if you watch that show bear on Hulu, as, as long as I'm cooking, she call, refers to me as chef Dave. Um, that's what I would like. Um, yeah, we have, um, our, let's see. Um, uh, Tada -da ties the knot is kind of what our hashtag is going to be. So we've, we're getting married in 11 days. There it is. And yeah, it's a uh, Tada -da ties the knot. And um, we have our story over there. We're, of course, going to have a lot of content. If you haven't RSVP'd yet, there's only one person from my family who hasn't RSVP'd. I have to be honest, it's wildly insulting. Like, I don't, I don't know how I'm going to recover from it. Other than a personal apology from that person, I, I've had to bite my tongue so hard not to call them out to be like, how dare you not RSVP? Doesn't mean you have to come, but how dare people, and again, anyone who's been married in the chat probably knows that this is how it goes. How dare you not tell me whether you're going to come or not to my wedding? You know, we're talking family, right? Even with two, three, four different um, like push notifications um, that happened. And I think I think probably Tasha probably had somebody on, 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 on her end of the family too. And you go like, look, that this is more, some people are just so like, just the idea, like, you know what I mean? Like they, it took them so long to RSVP. They feel like they can't, uh, our, oh, my phone's going off. So Long Beach phone call. Hey, Tasha, let me just see if you guys don't mind. We might have a package here. Hello. Oh, good. Sorry, now's not a good time to talk, unfortunately. No problem at all. No problem at all. How are you? I'm good, David. Thank you. Bye. I have no idea who that was. 
That was Justin from Long Beach Tesla. Uh, I, I was sorry, sorry for that, folks. I was just answering the phone because we're expecting some large packages, so we have my phone number is stuck out. Um, you know, I and, and I, I, I'm trust trust me when I say this. I'm the nicest per like I ha, I I cannot be mean to people, but I hate with a passion that my phone number is no longer a place of joy. Do you know what I mean? I am so fed up with the fact that not one thing that comes into this phone through the voicemail line is good news ever point blank never like who the hell's justin from tesla uh, look what, what tesla long beach that doesn't even exist that must be a scam Louis says no RSVP for a wedding is so awful. It's just so insulting to me. It's so insulting that I've personally, I'm talking text message people saying, "Hey, did you get the?" Uh, I I I literally had a family member said, "Hey, did you get the? Uh, did you get the RSVP? And the, uh, did you get to save the date? Oh yeah, we're gonna put it on the thing." And then they never responded. And then two, three different follow ups, and and just haven't heard a thing. Okie dokie. Um, yeah, could you imagine if that was the, 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 the look, if that was my, I'm not going to say who, but if that was the person who didn't RSVP apologizing, I would accept the apology, but I would still side eye it and be like, don't think I'm going to respond to your wedding. Um, oh, Teresa, not lost in the mail. No, no, no. We've made it so easy. Are you kidding me? Do you know how easy it is to RSVP in today's world? You don't even have, you could just type your name in, find your invitation. So like, I don't think my invitation would exist. I don't, yeah, see, I'm not on there. But if I were to say type uh, family member's name here, boom, you can, you don't, you could, they, she literally could have just RSVP to me. She could have told me and I would have manually inserted the RSVP. Either way, that, that, nah, I don't know if you guys care too much about that, but uh, you understand where I'm coming from. Um, and like Tesla Long Beach, how annoying, you know, you know what I mean? I got so excited because we are, we are waiting for a very important package for the wedding, which hasn't arrived yet. And that's the only reason I would answer my phone. Otherwise I'd let it go to voicemail and it, and, and usually when it's spam, they don't, Tasha, are you, can you hear me? Uh, Tesla Long Beach just called. Who the hell's Tesla Long Beach? How do they have my phone numbers right? I don't know. I'm the only the only people that have my phone number is whoever walks by my f front lawn and sees the UPS number. All right. Let's go to some voicemails. Hey, Dave. Um, this is Sarah. I Hi, Sarah. absolutely love your channel. I think you're amazing. Oh, I really, I just finished watching at Keep going. Work. More. Stop it. Uh, more. Don't tell my boss. Um, the you, you watched at work and didn't tell your boss. That's the dedication I like. Steal from your company. Um, the story about, uh, Caitlin Bristow, Kate, uh, Susie and Clayton. Um, and I just think that you covered that so perfectly. I appreciate you putting light on those situations because I know how much hate that he got. Um, and there was another caller that, you know, talked about how having fun within the Bachelor Nation. And I truly think that I like your channel because you point out some of its flaws and how we can make it better. Um, you bring such a bright community to the Bachelor Nation. So I appreciate the work that you do, and thank you very much. Have a good day. Oh, well, thank you so much, Sarah. Appreciate you. So, yeah, the video you're talking about, I'm sure most of you guys saw, has three times the average views uh, right now. It's got 12,000 views, which isn't, it's not that much, but for like an, for a video that's not like based on, you know, the, the most recent story, it's a pretty big deal. Um, Clayton and Susie, look, like I've said, I've said this before the, it's not necessarily that the show, I, I look at it this way. Is it the show's fault that, that when they make a Clayton sucks song that it triggers this crazy fan base sort of, yeah, like they're, they, they're reckless and yet, I say and yet, so it's not but, but the audience is really what the problem is because we shouldn't, we shouldn't be watching the show and committing any sort of DMs to people. I mean, don't get me wrong. There has to be a, a portion of our audience. I don't know, 5%, 1%. Um, there has to be a portion of our audience that will send people DMs and judge them. I, I know because I see people in our own audience that will leave comments that are passive aggressive or, or aggressive. And then you go, well, if they left that to them in their Instagram DMs, that would piss me off. And I was getting real, I'll be, I'll be honest. I listened to that Clayton and Susie podcast and I got really upset. 
And I know I'm preaching to the choir here because the live streams are always like, for the most part, like the all stars and people that get it. But if there was a, a lever I could press and it, and it banned anybody who sends them hate from my channel, done. Bye. Vamos. Goodbye. Au revoir. Adios. Konnichiwa? No, is that hello or goodbye? Um, uh, I think that's hello, but maybe it means goodbye. The point being is it's it's it disgusts me. It's um it's ugh, it's a hair in your food. It's just it's gross to think that a portion of society exists like that. And to be quite honest, it's really lonely to think that people exist like that. Now, look, I get DMs from people all the time that there's like this parasocial relationship that exists where. It exists uh, between the audience and the, um, you know, the the alumni, and it exists between my subscribers and myself. Where I can't possibly be the version of Dave to everyone in DMs the way I can be here because my head would explode. My literal head would explode. I kind of had to hit this crossroads where I just couldn't quite possibly be um, that one-on-one -on -one guy to ever, I'd have to clone myself a hundred times over and I don't even have a giant following small YouTuber here. So I can't imagine what it's like for someone like Clayton to be, to honestly just want to be loved and have a never ending cesspool. And I mean it in its most figurative and literal sense, a cesspool of the worst of bachelor nation sending them DMS. Hey, Dave, Kristen Nunez from South Florida, and I'm just giving you a call because tonight I am ready, 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 so ready for some Serene and Brandon content. Give me the love story already. We've had so much drama. Of course, I love me some drama, but I'm ready for some love story, so I hope tonight we get a little bit of why Brandon and Serene really are fitting together so perfectly because it seems as if they're almost uh, in love with the idea of each other, if that makes sense. Like maybe they've admired each other from afar. I know Brandon made some little stories about watching Serene. So I'm like, I want to see, do they truly have a connection, those two? I want to see it. So I'm here for it. Glad you have the pre, uh, pre stream, pre live stream, whatever this is. I'm here for it, Dave. You're amazing. And I'll see everybody in the chat. Thank you so much. Yeah, look, uh, my guess is, and again, there's no spoilers here, but my guess is if they do, uh, why, but those, what if those are diamonds in our ears? If they do, it's like, just someone rip them off. Uh, I'm rich. If they do um, harness this potential couple here, that they're going to slowly try to milk that, um, you know, you know, uh, metaphorically speaking, uh, unless you're Kira. Kira's going to try to milk it just because she's got that nipple fetish. But uh, yeah, either way, uh, <laughs> they're going to... They're gonna hold on to this. This is their this is their pocket aces. This is their big big you know big get. They've got some of the most beautiful people both inside and out. Both fan favorites. They're gonna they're gonna want to set this up as best as possible. So they might not get uh, you know um, you know. But then again, it's you know it's time if if they have something to get their story hot and heavy. Um, yeah. So we had a comment that said was let's go here. Where to go? Is it Tasha's dress? Yes. Yes. And we don't have an update on that. And we might be we might be looking for a new dress, to be quite honest. Um, that might be something. Does anybody know any wedding uh, bridal people in Los Angeles? Send me a DM on Instagram. Luckily, if there's anyone in this planet that has probable good dress connections, it's Tasha. But yeah, we are, um, we are six days away from leaving. And a promised and fitted custom dress has not arrived. Uh, we could talk about uh, pandemic uh, shipping um, from other countries all we want, but uh, either way, we're going to have a solution to that that we do not currently have. Um, Okie dokie. See some comments here. Yeah, Bruce, no, I don't have no problem with Tesla calling, but the fact that I haven't given anyone my phone number makes me feel like it isn't Tesla. You know what I mean? Who's Justin? Who's Tesla Justin from Long Beach? Does Long Beach even have a Tesla? Long Beach Tesla. Let's just see here. You know what I mean? Because I'm like, I hope it's not somebody I met. Long Beach Tesla. So it looks like they do have a location. 
I haven't pre I haven't pre ordered a car. I haven't paid for it. What if I search Long Beach Tesla Justin? Maybe it's somebody Justin, business data analyst Long Beach. No, that's not him. Justin Bieber's okay. It could be Justin Bieber. Um, either way, I don't know. Um, you know, first of all, and, and also people shouldn't just call willy nilly in today's world. Send me a text message. They call because they want to get you on the spot. Little did he know we were, uh, you know, in the middle of a recap. Hey, Dave, it's uh, David Mattern in uh, Las Cruces, New Mexico. Hey, David. So I had a uh, perfect thing to offset the progress you made on your physique uh, over the past several weeks uh, when you returned to Mexico. Uh, shrimp nachos. It's my favorite food to eat on the beach in Mexico. Uh, but then I heard you say the other day on one of your videos that you don't actually like shrimp. Oh, well. Uh, bye. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. Look, um, yeah, shrimp wouldn't be on my top five list of um, sea creatures I would eat. I would go, here's where I would go. Um, I would go with, um, I would probably do, um, my top would be, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm so trashy. I would, I would do fish and chips. Um, I would do swordfish, salmon, and I would do calamari. Um what else would I do before, before I would do clam chowder. That, that's obvious. I would do, um, here's what I would do. Here's what I would eat. I would eat shrimp before oysters, especially raw oysters. I've done them before. They're just a rich man's jello shot. You know, you, you know, all, no, it's all that rigmarole. I'm, oh, um, I'd eat shrimp before lobster. Why is Tasha laughing? You like scallops. Scallops, scallops are good. Scallops are good. Um, why are you laughing? Oh, cute outfit. Come in here. Tasha's got the cute outfit on. Oh, she's going to come in because she's got a cute outfit on too. Oh, come on. Look at her. She's getting, we have dance lessons tonight, folks. Come in here in five, six, seven, eight. Ladies and gentlemen, the bride-to-be in uh, six days. Oh, my goodness oh, gracious. My God. Well, we leave in six days. We don't get married for, um, I think, I, I, got, I got it right 11. here. Um, that's, uh, I was just griping about the RSVPs we, aren't, we never got. Um, but anyway, any any wedding dress updates? What are we gonna do? This is for the live Patreon. This is for the live audience. Do they know that my dress has yet to arrive? I just well, I just said that because I answered the phone and it was Tesla Long Beach calling. But I thought maybe it was gonna be your dress. Well, we just might have to go shopping this weekend. So, what do you want to do? What are we gonna do here? I don't know. You want to call on all of the wedding dress companies you've worked with in the past? Somebody's somebody's got to help you. We'll figure it out. I'm not why why stressed. are you not stressed? Can you believe she's not no. sorry? Can you believe she's not stressed about this? Of all the things that I that I thought you'd lose your mind over, you're is it like is it such a hassle that you're not? You know, letting... I, I told my sister that I think just I've been so stressed for so long that my like stress <laughs> nerve endings are desensitized. You're like you in know that happy I mean? go lucky place. Where you're like everything's fine. Let the kid shit on the wall. It doesn't matter. <laughs> my <laughs> limbic system has been flared for so long that I just don't feel anything anymore. Oh, no. that's good. You've burnt it off. <laughs> this is nice. Um, how do, what do you want to say about dance lessons? I like it. You think we're uh, making progress? Yeah. How am I doing? You're doing great, babe. Tasha gets kind of bossy though. For for the male being the leader, she'll still be like, "No, we gotta do it this way." <laughs> I'm like, not in my world. Luckily, dancing still chivalrous. That's why I like dancing. The guy leads for once. All right. Okay, bye. Okay, good luck. Bye, everybody. Oh, cute shoes, too. She's got her dancing shoes on. Show everybody your dancing I'm shoes. shoes. You're not going to wear this? Okay, anyway. Um, da da da. Scabba do it do. So, yeah, that's where we're at. I'm sure I haven't read any of the new comments here, uh, but I'm sure you guys understand. Um, Leanne said, is the Patreon going to be able to see your dance? Yeah, I'm not sure when, maybe, maybe not today, but maybe tomorrow or Friday, I'm going to set up my laptop and just let the live, let the whole Patreon live stream see our dance rehearsal. So I'm going to give you guys, wait, Tasha said what? You don't want to do that, Tasha? I got to ask Tasha, Tasha, can, Tasha, can the, can the Patreon do a, we could, I could just go, I could just do it on GoPro and show you guys after. Maybe that's what I'll do, which really wouldn't make a difference because I wouldn't be able to interact with you guys. Um, uh, Celeste says, your bride-to-be is amazing. Um, uh, hey, Tasha, Ashley says you would look good in a toilet paper dress. Yeah, until it rains. <laughs> then, um, Kristen says, can we have a Q&A post-wedding? Oh, of course. Uh, we are doing a waltz. Um, um, oh, Jen Murphy was unsubscribed. Uh-oh. 
what happened Jen Murphy there? Uh, it, well, I didn't do it. Um, all right, well, I tell you what. Let's buy me a few minutes here, and we will watch the trailers for tonight's episode. There's only two of them. Ah! Ashley and Jared walk in, and I'm, like, fangirling right now. This is a pleasant <laughs> surprise. Ashley and Jared are living proof of Paradise working. Well, hi, everybody. Uh, so we met on Bachelor in Paradise season two. And, now, we're back, and we're but back, but not, not to, to date anyone else. <laughs> Bummer. It goes without saying, we're not threats at all. If you guys have any questions <laughs> about like finding yeah, someone what, what here life is and, be like when and you then leave leaving the with somebody special that you met here, you know, we, we're here to chat. They're the best. They're literally like Bachelor Mom and Dad Paradise. It worked for them, and it's so special for them to be here because this is where their love started. Cheers, Cheers to everyone to Love in Paradise. Love in Thank paradise. you so much for having us. Coming up tonight on Bachelor in Paradise. So just as a reminder, I will not be doing an after show live stream. Um, as you guys probably know, I am beyond fried on content. Today we had um, we had a lot of content today. We had f at least five. I guess this would count as six. Six videos here. Let's see. I'm gonna let's see. These these are all the videos we had today. We have the um, Bachelor in Paradise preview, Clayton and Susie tell all, Bachelor Nick Vile slams Caitlin Bristow, Bachelorette star Eric Shore trying to discuss his mistakes, and Bachelor in Paradise episode two recap. So that is five videos, six plus the live stream. I was actually surprised this video um, didn't get many views. It is the video where, and it's a question I've posed, Hello, uh, everybody. where our producers silencing Eric Schwer from having the conversation. The Blatchelorette said this, Eric has already reached out to us with interest in not only a conversation, but in learning more and being in community with us. So if Eric, um, if Eric wants to go on the Blatchelorettes and have a conversation, then why hasn't it happened yet? Is Eric too busy with all of the work he's doing? No. He has to get approval before he goes on a podcast because he's under contract for the rest of the year. Uh, so he cannot go on a podcast without approval. As you guys know, um, I've been denied request for Clayton Eckert. I wanted to interview him about mental health. I've been denied a, a request to interview Michael A., who, of course, I wanted to interview about his late wife and the idea of... Um, uh, in, in sickness and in health. I wanted to talk to Michael A. about the idea of how he maintained his love through uh, sickness and have a conversation about uh, love above, uh, you know, uh, maybe personal, maybe you know, maybe selfless love, that type of thing. Oh, Dave, such a controversial topic, Dave. We can't let you talk to... No, rubbish. Absolute garbage, horse shit. And, you know, I would just just be disgusted if I knew uh, who it was uh, over there with the producers that wouldn't want that conversation to happen. But like I say, corporations are psychopaths and uh, they do not care about humans' emotions. They do not want those people to go on a podcast, even if the conversation is about um, uh, progress and good things to them. It is only something that could go wrong. And, um, and, uh, they're real, uh, you know, they're, they're, uh, they're, uh, they're showing their true colors. Hey Dave, it's Courtney from South Carolina. Thanks for keeping it real about Vile Vial. Um, you know, him going after Caitlin now, it's just a little sad. I mean, he's gotten his podcast out of this. He has a 22-year-old girlfriend. Dude, get over it. Move on. We've all heard it. Thanks for letting me uh, offload on that, and please continue keeping it real. Courtney and out. As always, Courtney's advice for all. Be careful who you bang. Be careful who you bang. Now, um, let me go here. We've got um, Kristen Nunez says, Dave denied. Yeah. And you know what? It's like, whatever. I, I Yeah, I take those. De I When I get denied media requests, I do take it personally, even though I shouldn't. Like, if I was in their situation, I probably wouldn't let someone like me. Um, I don't know. I don't know what I would do. But either way, like, I have no problem sharing. Look, they won't even let me have a conversation about the guy's late wife. Good grief. Good effing grief. Uh, but that's the way it is. That's the way it is. And Michael A. did tell me when his contract is up, he'd be glad to talk, uh, which I'm sure he would be. Uh, now, so let me just go back to this other page right here real quick. So 
um, let's see, who was it? Somebody said something. I just missed it about um, uh, what, maybe maybe this thumbnail. Oh, Annie said maybe the power of discourse on the thumbnail wasn't clickbaity enough. So yeah, I actually didn't use this thumbnail for the lead in the video. Um, I uh, I kind of punched it up and I used this one, which is our producers preventing the convo. And then I included the clickbait. So I thought it was a pretty good thumbnail. In fact, you can tell by the reach. Um, uh, the click-through rate's 10%, so maybe it wasn't great. Or maybe people are tired of having the conversation. Not really sure. We will not get tired of that conversation. That's for sure. Let's go to Lori in California. Hi there, Dave. This is Lori from California. And I have to say, you know, I'll keep watching, but I was disappointed. Oh, this is from last night. This is from after last night's episode. The content tonight. I, um, too much of Genevieve wallowing and then add then the Wells thing that, that was funny and it did make me laugh out loud, but it went on and on and on. And, um... And then, and then you didn't really see anything with Teddy. You didn't really see anything with a number of the other couples. I was just really surprised that the editors or whoever pieced it all, you know, together made that decision because, come on, just, that was just too much with Genevieve, just on and on and on and on. And her, way and way her birthday. Sorry, that just, <laughs> that's me. I'd like, I'd rather see more with all the other couples. So that's my, uh, my bit and um, you're doing fantastic great job well thank, thank you, you. thank you so much I appreciate it um, yeah you know I'm not saying this is the right way to do it but the show definitely does a little bit of that like um, early drama like there isn't enough time on day one or two to have like real emotions so they can do a little bit of like fall for this person then bring this person in kind of just that early villain drama and um, once we have like some heavier relationships and heavier deceit and heavier love then we'll get sort of more into uh, the, the heavier stuff uh Carly, good friend on the show, says Nick didn't just come out of nowhere with that story. He was giving dating advice. I don't think it was that bad. He was just explaining what he went through to relate to the caller. Yeah, I to I totally get that. But that's how like a lot of times on, on influencers' Instagrams, there'll be like a Q&A and the Q will be like, what do you do for your skincare routine? And they're like, well, for my skincare routine, I use. And then it's like clearly fabricated. Now, I'm not saying that this was fabricated from the caller. I'm just saying he was able to weave in his own personal experience on a dating show. Um, what advice could anybody need that are his audience from his experience on a dating show? Like the only reason Nick got to see Caitlin's true colors and were they even true colors because it was in a specific game show atmosphere. Like he doesn't know how Caitlin Bristow would be in a world outside of a dating show where the person has to string along multiple people until they find their uh, one or whatever. So I don't know. I mean, obviously Nick's trying to sell his book. I don't blame him for it. If I were Nick and I'm trying to sell my book, that's the time I would release all of it. But I mean, he did say, I saw her true colors. It turned me off to her. I mean, the guy went on for like five minutes. Um, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't per like, I didn't edit anything he said. Uh, but I, I, I hear your point. I just think it's like, well, Nick's Nick and I, like a credit to him. He knows what he's doing. And it's also in response to several weeks ago, Caitlin said, oh, Nick's, you know, Nick's kind of delusional or whatever Caitlin said. So it's not, it's, it's, um, it's not, um, uh, rare for me to see this sort of clack clap back, uh, culture that they've got going on all right the voicemail line is wide open if anyone wants to call in the voicemail line i'm looking for the phone number there it is folks 40121 oh that's not, hold on hold on i got too many uh things open on my computer here 401 oh geez come on yeah you guys have no idea what it's uh you, you have no idea what it's like but there's a lot of layers to uh running a live stream okay there it is 401-213-9828 um uh, you are up if you want to call in. Um, now, some people had asked earlier uh, if they thought the Sally thing, the Sally story was staged. Now, I might be gullible. Uh, no, I'm Dave. Uh, but I actually think there's a lot of truth to that story. I mean, it kind of makes sense. The only part that didn't make sense was the producer hiding in the trunk of the car. But the idea that, the idea that they 
were trying to get Sally and she kept backing out. We know for a fact she backed out the first time. So why hasn't she arrived yet? Maybe she will. We'll have to see. But um, yeah, I think, you know, obviously, uh, you know, I, w- I would take it with a grain of salt. Uh, but there could be some truth to that. We're going to go back to Bachelor in Paradise and let's see if there's... Um, did I play this second trailer? I don't even think... Oh, wrong one. I don't even think I played this second trailer. Let's have a listen. New biggest facts of Paradise are the boys are here. Oh, oh my God. God. Oh. Things are going to get elevated. And boy, it is good to be back, baby. It's <laughs> fact. You hear those waves, dude? You hear those waves? The waves smashing on the sand going over it like butter on pancakes. When you're itching for the waves. The only lotion is the ocean, dude. <laughs> hey, shout out to Whitney Lovelace. Says, love the podcast. Go Dave Neal. Yeah, we will be launching after my wedding. We will be launching an audio version. I'm going to be just, you know, slowly telling people this. An audio version of all of the highlights every single day. So if you like the videos and can't get enough of them, there will be a podcast which will share the audio that from the meat and potatoes of every video with maybe about a five to 10 minute intro, just wrapping up everything we talked about on the day. So we're going to have that going on. Um, trying to read some of your comments here. Um, trying to see what we got here. Dr. Josh said, Shanae kills it. Yeah. I'm a big fan of, um, Shanae. Um, I know that I know that not everybody is, and that's okay with me. That's okay. If we're not all fans of, Shanae, but um, I, you know, I'm excited to see like real feelings being shared maybe. Um, but anyway, Nick is on, I'm gonna, let's play a clip of this. The Jason, Na- by the way, the, vi- the video quality of this episode is so good, but the fact that it's a long form interview, this audio is terrible. Now they're using nice microphones, but you can hear them boost. You can hear the post-production where they kind of boost when they're talking. And then when they're not talking, it picks up all this background noise. Let's just pick a clip. Um, why people watch The Bachelor. Let's see what Nick has to say That's about that. Yeah. What do you think's made the show so popular? See, it sounds good. I guess uh, it's love is relatable to everyone. Echoey. Yeah. Gay, straight, black, yeah. white, yeah. you know, old, young. Like yeah. everyone relates to the desire of having a human connection. And I call it the swingers moment. Are you familiar with the movie Swingers? Yeah. Yeah, great movie. Love that movie, yeah. Um, and there's that scene, uh, John Favreau meets the girl at the bar, and then he like leaves like 30 voicemails. Yes. On her answering oh, machine. 100%, yeah, the end. Yeah. And I, I say that because, uh, like, people like to watch The Bachelor, essentially the snark on the people who go on the show, right? And I think we do that because we find peace in realizing that other people, like, make these mistakes mm-hmm. just like us. And But, you know, it's just easier to see that. Can you hear? Now, look, I know I'm being picky. This is better audio. This is definitely better audio than what you would hear on, like, a Bachelor Happy Hour podcast. But... They, it it could be so much better. Like they, it's it's overly post produced, and the room is obviously super echoey. So it's um it's naturally echoey anyway. And someone else, and, I and think- I'm only saying it because Jason Nash has three million subscribers. This should be like Howard Stern level, crystal clear. I think- you know, it's it's very relatable to to see people. Yeah, and Bruce says, why are these mics so long? What were these mics developed for? Anteaters? No. What were these mics developed for? Giraffes? You know, they're just holding down here, just trying to, you know, like, here, let me do a podcast here where I just have to hold the thing, you know. Okay, you guys get the point. All right, surely you can't be serious. Uh, very, very nice. People make fools of themselves for the purposes of, of love and relationships. Yeah. And I ultimately, and that just never gets old. Are you still doing stuff with The Bachelor? Uh, I will. I, part of my show, <laughs> Come on. show The Vile Files, I, I recap it. Um, and so, so to that end, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm still associated no, with no, the No, no, no. The, the mics are definitely... Like, this is your standard mic size, okay? So, so those mics are at least three or four times too long. Now, a boom a microphone is naturally longer, so they're kind of like boom. Anyway, the point, this is a cardioid microphone. It picks up everything in, in isolation. Those microphones are just, they're just, I don't know. I mean, they're, 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 they could be good, but a mic's only as good as its surrounding area. Oh, and I'll occasionally interview some of the, the bigger stars of the show um, if I, I think they have a compelling story. They didn't want to make you the host? Uh, no, no. And I, I pitched myself though. Yeah. I read that. Yeah. I read um, that. 
you know, Jesse's great. And I think, you know, Jesse has a relationship with uh, ESPN. And quite frankly, to be candid, uh, I think the things I would have loved to do as a host, I don't think they're quite interested. This in. is like the microphone that your girl told you not to be worried about. Like that. <laughs> didn't have it? What's that? I guess someone who like hawks openly about relationships and, and dating. I mean, quite frankly, everything I talk about in this book is literally the opposite of what they would want you to do on The Bachelor. Tell me. Give me an example. I like that. Well, I... You know, like no, no, no. Like, angels, angels, uh, critiquing my manhood. This is not a short mic. This is the average. This is what a sure SM58. This is every single mic you'll ever see someone sing a national anthem is the size of this mic. Now, there's a cord that comes in the back here, which mine's already hooked up, so I'm not going to share it. So there's a cord that comes off of this. But you see there, he's holding the mic. Which, like, and again, I'm not judging him. These, these are Jason, Jason Nash's mics. <laughs> but you, you come to my channel for irreverent co content. But he's holding the mic down there, and then there's still, like, three more inches. These mics, I mean, like, maybe they pole vault with them. I don't know. Maybe they joust each other, uh, you know, gladiator style afterwards. I don't, I'm not really sure what they do with these mics. Are they, um, are they lightsabers? Like, we don't really know. I think you should take time and get to know someone and ask questions. And I think you should be cognizant of, of not just hoping that someone likes you, but focus on whether you like them and, mm -hmm. and not give in to your ego and things like that. And that's literally the opposite of The Bachelor. In fact, I, uh, I, I just watched the premiere of Bachelor in Paradise. Uh -huh. And then, you know, Jesse, the host, so, you know, he gets everyone together and he goes... Find love. Look at, that, look at his Go microphone. Home. You know, it's like, it's very much like a threat. Look at how sick these microphones are. Oh, hold on a second. Hold on. It's just, it's, if I was trying to just, oh, like, have a conversation, can you, there's no, okay, this is, I've never seen, you're right. I've never seen microphones this big. It's almost like they, they were in Photoshop and someone just like stretched the microphone. Okay. It doesn't matter in a way of like you must find love you don't find oh he's two-handing it he's got two hands he's got the whole grip on it you fucking loser um and yeah i, I just i just Good don't talk you. about yeah. those things and i love you know like listen the, jesse's there to facilitate the show and as the host of the show uh listen the less you know the more you react to the unknown uh-huh and and so he does a great job of that show i i think i'd love to have the cast have a little bit more mentorship along the show, but I don't know if that's the recipe they want, right? And uh, you're not going to say, guys, why don't you take a few months and yeah, we'll I mean, come back and shoot the end. Yeah. And, yeah, and listen, if I had gotten the opportunity, I would have adjusted. But ultimately, Jesse's a fantastic host. I think he's doing a great job. I think he's everything they were looking for. And I think it was a seamless transition from no, I don't Chris think it's, Harrison. I, and, just talking to you for the short amount of time, I don't think it's right for you. It's not who you are. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, it would have uh, been a great opportunity. I'm thankful for the time they gave me, but um, everything tends to work out. And now you do a lot of uh, relationship advice on the podcast, right? Okay, we'll go back to that if we need to. Um, let's play some of your voicemails. Hey, David, everybody. It's Stu from Southeast Pennsylvania. Um, Ethan and I, my boyfriend, were watching the episode last night, and um, when they were going through Sally's uh, suitcase, I was like, yeah, you know, like, do it. Like, you know, that's oh, man, you know, I wonder if she's going to show up. And Ethan was sitting there, and he said, he, like, looked at me. He was like, that's kind of screwed up. Like, I don't know. If, if if I was on the beach, if I was a dude on the beach, and I found out that the girls were, like, going through her stuff, and I heard about that, I don't think I'd be into them anymore. Like, that's really mean. <laughs> so I just, like, I, I, after he said that, I, you know, I reprocessed it. I was like, yeah, that's kind of screwed up, whether it was staged or not, and whether they were told to go through their stuff or not. I don't know. I just thought that was a really interesting take from somebody who doesn't watch the show a lot. So, all right. Have everybody. See you, everybody. No. Bye. <laughs> Stutes. Yeah, from now on, I want everyone to end. <laughs> uh, yeah, look, I mean, did they actually go through uh, Sally's bag? I don't think Sally's got hair extensions. So if we see her wearing hair extensions, we'll know. Uh, but I don't know. I think it's all made up. Hi, Dave. It's Linda from... Oh, Linda's calling, everybody. Linda in Indianapolis, one of our favorites. Um, Indianapolis. Hi, Dave. It's Linda from um, Indianapolis. I was just calling to say hi. I haven't gotten to call in for a while. I think you're doing a great job. You spend too much time doing this, I think. <laughs> but... 
you know, it's your paycheck. I get it. Um, but I really appreciate everything you do. Um, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Well, thank you so much for calling in, Linda and Indianapolis. No, I mean, I'm not trying to spend too much time, Linda. Uh, I did wake up early the last two days. I've I've been getting up at 6 a.m. Um, Sierra Jackson's on a live stream. Do you guys want to check out? Let's just look at Sierra Jackson's live stream. We saw she just started one. Let's uh, let's hope that she doesn't um, have any sort of um, uh, nudity happening. Um, uh, let's see, because as we know, these live streams have had uh, p- uh, people joining in. But let's just take a look on her live and see well, they pulled up the palm skin the finger and stitched it and then to make it even crazier there is the knuckles i actually still have my pinky knuckle and i think that's a lot of the reason why people don't notice it is because i still have that knuckle so i technically have part of my finger and so i can actually move it and wiggle it still because technically part of the finger is still there it's not fully gone just like partly gone. <laughs> it's so cool. But I love it. Um, it makes me who I am. So um, yeah, I have nine fingers, y'all. I do get 10% off when I get my nails done. That is not a ah. lie. I do save 10% because how do you justify it? You're doing 10% less work, 10% less time, not, not painting that nail. It doesn't exist. So give me 10% off. You know what I'm saying? It's math. One plus one equals two. So anyways, um, so glad that you guys wanted to like learn my story and little, learn a little bit more about me and just like, yeah, everybody's scars are a story. And it's, She's like, so adorable. And so, yeah. And fucking moves. Ah! <laughs> and when I have kids, it's going to be the claw. And I'm be like, the claw is coming. Ah, ah, ah. Okay, anyways. It's a Toy Story reference. <laughs> um, but... Um, She's live right now. Looking back, seeing like any questions. Don't really see any questions from y'all. Do you have phantom pains? Oh my gosh. Yes, I do get phantom pains. And it's just my pinky. And that's crazy because I never thought I would. But I do have phantom pains. There are times when this whole hand will throb and it will hurt. And there is nothing I can do. If I take like Advil or like anything at all. It doesn't do anything. And it's just like this this pain where all I can do is just like kind of squeeze like my knuckle and like shake my hand out to kind of make it stop hurting. But for the most part, like, yeah, I do have phantom pains and they're very random. And I notice them actually. Phantom pains. Weird, but when there's like changes in the weather, um, I will notice like Mike, like when it's like kind of rainy or like gloomier days, I actually have like more like pressure here. It's weird. And so I do get phantom pains. Um, and then did they put me to sleep for the procedure? They did. I was knocked out. Your girl was out cold. Um, thank is this God, interesting? Because I definitely wouldn't want to be awake for it. Um, I do write with my right hand. So I'm um, right handed, write with my right hand. Um, but I can also write with my left hand. So like, just from this, like, trying right, to I asked her, does she time. swim in circles? And, uh, another question that I saw, this one was one I saw on Twitter, like, why is it not something you lead with? Or is it not the first thing that you like start off with? And really, reality, like, it's kind of like, it's so small to me that it doesn't matter, right? And if I do have to lead with it because it's that important to somebody, they're probably not somebody I want to have in my life. Like, if it's that important that they need to know whether or not I have, like, a pinky, you know? So it's not really something that I do lead with because it shouldn't make a difference. Um, Oh, we lost the audio there. Oh, 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 boop, 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 boop. And so I don't leave with it. She needs but a longer microphone. Eventually I'll, I'll like show them, um, hold their hand. They usually notice it. I talk with my hands a lot too. So if you're not noticing it and I'm talking with my hands a lot, then like that's kind of on you. Um, but yeah, it's just not really something about me that I feel like I need to like start off the bat with because it's not my whole identity. It's just like a, an experience of my life that I've had at once and like a cool fact. I guess, but I don't want to be known for it just because like at the same time, I do have trauma connected with it, with it being like a lot of bullying and a lot of things growing up that I had to go through because of having nine fingers. It's not kind of something you want to start off with because you do always have that fear, that slight fear of like rejection or being made fun of. 
um, are just being seen differently. Right? You know, it's just wild that we didn't even know she had the, had the finger issue. That's how beautiful she is that no one noticed her finger. And we have um, Chatty Broads. I was just tagged in the Chatty Broads. Now, as you guys know, I, I, I might do their podcast um, but they just um, said, uh, we want to hear from you. What topics do you want us to chat about before the podcast wraps? And um, let's see, I see Jules Strong said Dave, Neil, and Craig. And I thought someone else tagged me in it. I just got a, I just got a notification on my Instagram. Um, <clears throat> if they have the choice between me or Mark Wahlberg, I wonder who they would choose. Um, <laughs> Craig, uh, Game of Roses would be fun. That'd be a good one to do. Uh, let's see here. Uh, scoob it do do boo do boo boo. I'm sure if I was on their podcast, there would be there would definitely be some of their audience that don't like me, which is fine. Wait, what are you gonna do? Um, um, da, 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 Tyler Cameron, that would be a good one. Someone who tagged me, let's see who it was. Um, either way, um, I think I might do it. Uh, I thought I saw a tag here. Oh, all right, well, maybe I'm just losing my mind. Um, anyway, um, yeah, no, no, no. Someone definitely tagged me in it. Now, now I have to prove it to you guys. Um, I just, um, I don't know if I got the notification. Did you guys see it there? Um, scoop, ba, ba, do, boo, boo, boo. Oh, they got such an engaged audience that they get this many comments in half an hour. My Instagram is not that engaged. Um, if you haven't already joined me on Facebook, I'm going to be releasing more content on my professional page, Dave Neal on Facebook. So go find it out there. I released five videos today. All of my YouTube content I'm now going to be putting up on Facebook as well. So if anyone has any bachelor groups that you're in and you feel like there's a video you'd want to share with those groups, I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, Carolyn here said an ep with Dave Neal would be super fun. Like, why don't they tag me? That's what I'm, so two, a few people have recommended me. Katie Thurston, that would be a good one. Um, Scott, yeah, boo, 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 boo. Um, uh, whatever. Uh, da, 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 scab, boo, 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 boo. Anyway, um, time to wrap it up over here. So let's play some jams. Get ready to get out of here. Let's put a good song here. Waiting here for you. All right. So we're going to wrap it up. It's 4.57. I'm heading to dance class. So I'm going to have to catch Bachelor in Paradise live later on tonight. Um, I've, I've made some turkey soup for dinner. Look at all these amazing comments they got. All at well, oh, Here it is. Maya Mar uh, Mary said, bring Dean Eels on. So we got... We got three or four recommendations. You know, hey, we got a loyal fan base out there. All of you guys, the uh, power listeners, as you were. Um, anyway, I'll be back tomorrow with tons of content. Let's see, did I get all your voicemails in? Oh, no, I got two voicemails. Let's play them. Let's play the voicemail. Okay, this is Mimi from Pittsburgh. I called last night. I don't know if you got the oh, call Mimi. or not, but I just wanted to tell you to have a wonderful wedding, a wonderful reception, a wonderful honeymoon, because you deserve it. And so does Tasia. So have a great time. Oh, thanks, Mimi. And uh, I'll talk to you later. Oh, Bye. How nice. Bye, M Mimi. Uh, Linda and Mimi both called in. All the all-stars called in. Hi, Dave. This is Danielle from Pennsylvania. I'm calling to talk about how much Genevieve touched her hair and how it was so distracting the whole entire time. I feel like her fingers were through her hair the entire time, and I'm just hoping that through this next episode, she can kind of touch her hair a little bit less. That's pretty much it. Thanks. All right, Bye. I will be letting I will be letting Genevieve know to try to touch her hair less. Uh, the things you notice. All right, folks. Well, that's going to be it from me. I'm heading out of here. Everyone have a fantastic evening. I'll see you bright and early first thing tomorrow morning on Hump Day with more content. We'll talk to you then. Bye. I love me some Dave Neal.